Here is the last day on the Ricardo Tormo track in Valencia with the second Elite 2 race of the weekend to kick things off. With huge numbers of fans here once again. In fact, over 20,000 people decided to come here and see the race's phenomenal turnout. So let's have a look at the grid then. Thanks to his fastest lap in race number one, Philip Liet starts in pole position. Gianmarco Ercoli is second and Steens Longen in third place. And of course, with it being the second race, every driver has seen what the others can do. And they're going to want to get as many points as they can from this race weekend to take into the second round. About to go over the line, the safety car, the course car, peels off to the right-hand side into the pits. And it's about time for racing the second Elite Race 2 of the weekend. Here we go. Lietz and Ercoli up front. We know that Lietz on pole position. We also know that Ercoli is going to want to take him as quickly as possible. And it looks like a fantastic start here for Ercoli. Yes, not a great one for Lietz at all. Ercoli dives in and takes him. We go on board with Steens Longen. And he also goes past Philip Lietz. A terrible start for Lietz there. And he dives in on the inside there, Steens Long, and fantastic bit of driving, which means up ahead we now have Ercoli leading, Steens Longen in second place, and then the leader, oh, the pole position driver anyway, Philip Lietz down into third place and being caught very, very quickly by Thomas Ferrando. Incredible start to this race here in Valencia. Another car to look out for is car number five of Renault, who is in fifth place and running very closely behind Ferrando. Let's have a look at the front two then. We have got Longen in second place. He is trying all he can to overtake Ocoli. Diving on the inside later on the braking, has got the inside line. Is he going to make it stick? Yes, forcing Ocoli slightly wider. Longen does it again, takes the inside line and has the race lead. Absolutely incredible, but Ocoli is not going to hold off. He's going to try and push and push as much as he can. And you can see behind there well third place is Lietz really trying to get on the back of them both we're now on board with Thomas Ferrando up ahead we have Lietz Ferrando pushing very very closely is he going to be able to get past Lietz that's the question and the answer is it looks like yes it's later on the braking gets the inside line forces Lietz out wide and Ferrando has done it up to third place Lietz now in fourth what a terrible race he's having from pole position Backwards, backwards he's going. And we now look at the race leader, Longen, ahead of Ercoli. In third place, Ferrando. Lietz in fourth. And Ranur is in fifth place, right on the back of Lietz. Oh, very late breaking. We're on board with Thomas Ferrando. Longen has missed the apex, allowed Ercoli to go through, and Ferrando as well. So, Ercoli first, Ferrando second, Longen third. And he's got Lietz and Ranur right behind him after that very, very wide line. I don't I don't know how he missed the apex, but here we go. Into the left hander. A touch, two touches. It looked like it was Ranur pushed into Lietz, who then pushed into Longen, spinning them round. Who's going to hit? No one's going to hit. They all seem to narrowly avoid Longen there. Absolutely incredible. But one driver breaking a little bit later than the other, forcing one into the next as we see Longen spin. A little bit of touching there. They managed to get past, though. No huge casualties. Everyone continue and go back on board now and see what happens ahead of you. And so close, so close to being taken out. That was incredible driving there. So, standing at the halfway point, eight laps in, we have got Ercoli in first place, followed very closely by car 37, that of Thomas Ferrando. And in third place, not far behind, is Renault as well. In the Lady Cup, well, we had four ladies start at the race here, and we have Carol Perrin in car 54 leading over Francesca Lenosi in that lovely white and pink car 99. They're fighting for positions, while Erica Montefiore, car 88, is a fair way ahead of the fourth place lady, Gabriella Prado, a fair bit further back. Can't even see her in shot at all. Up ahead then, and Arcoli leads, but not that far ahead of Thomas Ferrando, who's really got the bit between his teeth. You can see the gap now, but you can see just where Ferrando is. Ferrando, very, very fast, looking very strong, is going to be looking to reel in Arcoli as much as possible. We go on board now with Ferrando. Look at his lines here. Look how he starts to feed him back in. In fact, that looked like a big chunk of distance 
hauled out. I know that Acoli's going to drive off the line, as you can see there, but I think Ferrando is closing up. In fact, he is definitely closing up on the back of Acoli, and Acoli is going to do all he can. That gap has been significantly closed, maybe half the distance now as it was the lap before. So Ferrando can really sense this now as we go back on board with him around the right-hander. A better line for Ferrando. Acoli diving into the inside. All he can see in his mirrors is that big white and blue car belonging to Ferrando. And he's gone out on the right-hand side to take the left-hand side. Ferrando follows him round there. A better angle for Ferrando. Right on the tail now. And he's got the use of the slipstream on that nice long straight there. Diving onto the inside. Will he go late on the braking this time? We've seen Ferrando do it. He does late on the braking. Ferrando has done it. He's overtaken Ercoli. Incredible overtaking manoeuvre. Ferrando really closing that gap. And then, as you can see now, starting to open the gap up immediately. Ercoli is looking to try and stay as close as he can, knowing that uh, he has got a very, very fast car behind him. That one belonging to Ranur. So the top three we have Ferrando, Ercoli, Renault looking back in the field in the legend trophy. Eric de Donka leads Leonard Vernet and Didier Beck, car number eight. So all going off in the field. Also further back, we have got Steens Longing really, really aiming to get back into the top 10 after the spin. He is on the back of Eric de Donka. We go on board with Steens Longing. You can see how close he is. Eric de Donka is almost a sitting duck who fancy because Longing goes very late on the brakes, much, much later than Dodonka, and takes him very, very easily. Gets back on the power. He's not finished yet. He's right up the back now of Carol Perrin, and I feel that he may even get up to eighth place. He sets the fastest lap, the 143, three, two, nine, right on the tail. He feels he might get some points here. Now, that was not looking good after the spin. We're still on board with Steens Longin. Up ahead of him, he has got Perrin, who is in eighth place. Goes on the inside, he's in her breaking point and breaks much later, goes in straight on the gas again. He is now in eighth place and right on the back of car number 99 of Francesca Lanosi. Will he be able to do it? Phenomenal drive in there from Steens Longin after that horrible spin. In the gentleman trophy, we have got Jerry Devert in third place and Simone Loretti and Sebastian Morales really fighting out Sebastian Morales number seven Loretti in car number 12 like I say Jerry Devert is in car number 78 these two really really fighting for their position in the gentleman trophy and off wide goes Devert it looks like he was looking to gain as much as he could but he runs wide no damage to the car not a great thing for him doesn't really lose that much in terms of positioning but not great, he wanted to have a nice clean race. But back up ahead of him, it looks like Loretti has gone through, but Morales has slowed down. In fact, he's going slightly backwards too. In fact, he's gonna finish around about 16th place now. Had a bit of an off, a bit of a wobble. He's not looking good out there, but yes, he'll finish in 16th place, so at least he does get a finish. Last lap then, Ferrando is ahead of Ercoli. This one's going to go down to the line, you feel, although it has to be said that Ferrando is a fair bit ahead now of Ercoli, who is doing all he can to stay in contention and make sure he gets that second place. So round he goes. Thomas Ferrando has looked very, very good, the young driver, the 17-year-old, looking very strong all race weekend. And over the line he goes for his third race win of his career. However, today, because of an incident in the first race with an unsafe green flag released by his team, they are going to have to take a five-point deduction or a five-position deduction, I should say. So there we have it. Second place for Ercoli ahead of Florian Renault, the first rookie, and Nicky Peterson in car 44. Simone Loretti is the best gentleman, while Eric Dodonka, 98, wins in the Legend Trophy, and Francesca Lanosi tops the Lady Cup. Thomas Ferrando is more than just a little happy.